Hi, this is Lucky Singh, the property fixer, here to fix you and help you grow your property and your business affairs to the next level. So if you're looking for knowledge and insights about how to get involved in property, solve your problems about scalability in your property business, then do watch our 20 minute clips. We've taken them from hundreds and, well, thousands of videos that we've taken over the last six months and we've broken them into simple chunks which can make them useful for you. So do watch and do subscribe to our YouTube channel underneath as well. I was, I, was just, well. No, I was just trying to give a bit of flavor to the answer. I don't think anybody wants to know to be honest. <laughs> right, okay, I won't answer actually, this I think, question. Uh, okay. This, this uh, show could fall into disrepute actually if uh, Vijay Sal told us about his upbringing. <laughs> right. okay. And I think we'll uh, we might out. actually get banned, you know that, uh, Sophia. <laughs> We'll leave out Sophia, this is, Just be careful that you don't ask VJ Sal questions. It could right, get quite exactly. uh, dangerous. Dangerous, right. Okay, we will leave out the uh, VJ Sal's uh, student no, no, I'm life. I'm kidding. I think we do want to know, um, actually, because now you're, yeah. now you're, there's a, I think there's going to be like, that's, that was just putting a caveat in, like a disclaimer for any of the audience. Excellent. Because, you know, this is meant to be a family show. Uh, family Sunday. show, yes. So. Well, that's why we've got you on here, Lucky, to keep the discipline. Okay, um, Sophia, so you've uh, gone through how many years? I mean, you're only 16. You could have only done student teaching for what, about half a year. How long? Um, I actually qualified 10 years ago. All right, so you were at six when you qualified. And <laughs> you were 10 years? It's been 10 years since I qualified um, and I had my daughter uh, just after I qualified. In fact, during, in between my PGE year, I had mm -hmm. my second child. Um, okay, so you've been teaching how many years? 10 years, yeah? 10 years, yeah. On and off, years, really? I had a career break. Um, okay. So how many years? I had about a two or three year career break and then, because mm -hmm. I moved up to Falkirk, um, I only did locum work, so a couple of full-time years and then a couple of it just day-to-day -day supply. Okay. I think locum probably pays better, but a bit more disruptive. Is that right? It's more disruptive, but no, again, the difference between English and Scottish, you don't have um, agencies. It's just um, applying to the local councils and then they just call you whenever you need you and no, there's not any extra pay for this, no. So it's not ching, ching, ching. It's just pain in the, uh, uh, well, pain. Okay, right. Okay, so we're going over to Sophia. So you've had 10 years. Obviously, I mean, this is a classic example of people who get into their early career and they decide it's not really what they wanted to do. And I'm not saying you didn't like teaching because we recognize, I think there's a, a difference in the recognition of Sophia. Before I continue, there's a couple of shout outs. I think I've got a whole lot of, I've got Cameron and I've got Deborah Bisley and Amar Ali and Cameron, Cameron Singh. Right, we've got all those, we shout out to them. Right, okay, coming over, the point is I think you probably enjoyed teaching. There's an element of satisfaction there, but there's probably a mismatch in terms of enjoying the complete essence of teaching once you get satisfaction from uh, the children, but the, the parents of the children, and there is maybe a synonymity between yourself, your background, and the background of the children and their parents, probably makes teaching a bit more uh, meaningful. Whereas when you don't have uh, some essence of you know similarity with the background of children, it probably makes it a bit different because there is a cultural difference, irrespective of whoever says what. There is a cultural difference uh, everywhere, and it doesn't have to be colour-led. It is even language-led because there is a difference in the culture in Scotland between people who are ethnically Irish and those who are Scottish. Is that right, uh, um, Sophia? Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I have heard of people being other because you know the Irish white are here in Scotland, so exactly. or even oh, so English people in Scotland, they will also try right. yep. exactly. So, there's a difference. This is human uh fragility, and I, I don't think we should put it into uh discrimination or you know, uh, into uh, matters of the skin color. I think it's a natural disposition everybody has that we always. Uh, resist or dislike something we don't understand. That's just the way it is. Life is like that. But 
you found yourself uh, coming into property. What was the reason? Is it because it doesn't have any bounds of having to get up nine to five? You're in control of your own timetable. Is it more to do with the fact that you have a desire to have your own business? What is the main or some of the main factors that you've uh, decided to get into property for? That's a big factor, the flexibility, because I realised I can't no longer work full-time hours being a single parent, 95 rigid hours. They, they weren't going to work with me. So I do a mm -hmm. lot of my work, like, middle of the night when the kids are in bed. I do a lot of my work there when they're in school, but I have, you know, breaks in between, so I'm catering for them and, and, and the business. There's also mm -hmm. the the barriers that other people put in you. Again, exactly what you're talking about, the culture difference. Here, I'm more in control, and then when you're in the property world, it's just so multicultural that you know everything and everything goes and it's just you just appreciate for what you can give for your, your service so excellent that was so the color of your skin is the color of money ching 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 okay <laughs> yes. so lucky sing what say you to sophia and her endeavors to get into the property world is that a good uh i mean she's if you look at it i mean really you know, I, I admire people who can get up in the middle of the night to do their work, although I do work late nights sometimes, getting ready for the show, having to prepare material, et cetera, et cetera. But sometimes it does uh, regard and, and admiration for people who can get up and are focused enough to, to at least try and encapsulate their dreams. Lucky, tell us if one you getting up in the middle of the night not because you had bad dreams not because you were scared of something but when you were working hard putting your nose to the grindstone getting up and making sure you were dotting the i's and crossing the t's to make sure that million pound check ching ching was coming in on time give us an example i think um it takes me back to the time I used to work for uh, Deloitte, uh, the accountancy firm, on a full-time job, like nine to five, but it was more like a, a eight to ten type of job, really, because it was quite a senior position. Um, at the same time, um, I had uh, two kids as well, uh, both quite young, uh, so I was building up a property portfolio in North London in Seven Sisters. Um, and I remember once, uh, quite a few times actually, uh, I'd be like looking to go and see property deals. Uh, but the property deals, you can't really just take anybody's word for it. You have to go and see the property. You've got to meet the agent. You've got to possibly meet the owner. Uh, the old, you know, pre-COVID nineteen days, you know, uh, about twenty years ago. And um, what would happen is that uh, uh, I'd be <coughs> Working on a, in fact, I set up a company called First Pakistan, which is a training company in Pakistan, funny enough. So we'd send trainers over. So I'd be working on that with meetings like on a, a small day on Saturday. Sorry? You mean like a pair of, uh, like an old pair of trainers, smelly trainers, or what, what do you mean by trainers? Uh, we're providing uh, executive training, strategic training to. Uh, oh, right. like, like a pair of training trainers, corporations corporation in uh, right. Pakistan from the UK, so we're getting established strategic uh, um, teachers from uh, high-end universities and sending them over to create a change or you know create knowledge transfer. At the same time, so I've been doing about four hours meetings with that company. Then, on, then in the morning, at uh, seven in the morning, I'd actually drive up because it's least amount of traffic on a Saturday, but I'd take my son with me in the, in the back because our daughter was quite small. So my wife at the time would look after my little one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I would literally be like um, driving there, meeting an agent, looking at property or getting the rental sorted. So I'd be doing visits, at least two visits uh, to Seven Sisters in a week. Um, but heart, some of the time I had to take my son with me. So it was, it was kind, of, kind of funny because I had him in the background and I was on the... And then I had to do a lot of phone calls. So it's quite a, emotionally, it's quite tough because you've got to be like, uh, man, you know, looking after your son and actually doing the business and sort of looking after him, his feeds and like his okay. milk. 
Sophia, there you are. You've got somebody else who's gone through the grindstone, has made it. So there's hope. Uh, okay, tell us now, where are you in your cycle of property then? How many have you uh, purchased? How many are you managing? Have you decided to go into the managing and the letting industry? Are you merely just trying to be a landlord and purchase assets and build up your property portfolio? Before I ask you the answer to that, we've got a question from Z Zita uh, Zangu. Right, okay. So Zita says, what's the criteria? What's your vetting process for people who are non-resident UK but want to get into the property industry? Ching, 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 lucky thing. Obviously, you can give that answer later on. Or Zita, and also for Marsha, we've got a hi. She's a new listener today as well. Shout out to Marsha. Uh, yes, Sophia. So, what are you, where are you in the in the cycle? Are you uh, letting and management software type of person? Are you uh, an agent? Are you a buyer landlord? What are you? Um, no, I'm not interested in doing lettings. Um, I'm a, primarily a property sourcer. So we've got a client who's residing in Saudi Arabia and we're trying to source a property according to his criteria. Um, Excellent. So that's ching, what ching, ching, Saudi Arabia. Sounds like a bag of money. So what, and how many properties have you purchased in, in you've, is it a year you've been into for that? One year? It's a, a year part-time in between some teaching work in between being a mom in lockdown. So it has been slow, it's been part-time, plus obviously we know that the, the property register was closed for a wee while. So mm -hmm. we haven't purchased one, but we have done, we've got a joint venture going on in Glasgow where we're just mm -hmm. doing a refurb a conversion, a two-bed into a three-bed ensuite. So that's a, hopefully um, before this end of this year, that will be complete and money will be returned. Um, excellent, excellent. But that's quite unique because uh, Saudi investors don't really like to put a uh, capital in there. They just want to buy trophy assets. So is he a resident uh, Saudi or is he a expat, someone who's from the United Kingdom who's living in Saudi? He's a bit of both. He's, he's British, yeah, but um, he's actually from Bahrain, I think, but he works in Saudi. He used to work over here as well in Scotland. Um, and okay. he's, yeah, he's just asked us to find us because he's already got our rental in Edinburgh. He's just asked us um, to find another rental for him. So you're right, it is about building up their own assets. That's, yeah. okay. that's a separate part of sourcing. And then the other side is our own investments where we're doing the refurb. So we've Excellent. got two parts right. to it. So what you've done is you've taken property and you've broken it down into different pockets of activity. So uh, they were talking about asset classes, I think, a few days ago. I think the young man, Cameron Singh, was on and he's talking about you know, what, what type of asset classes are there? And we explained to him there's, you know, there's about four or five or six, which are main, and then you've got lots of subsidiary type of asset classes. Uh, in asset, you can sub-break them down. And what you've done is, so you, you're you into, uh, they I think they call them BRR, so buy, uh, refurb, and then refinance or something. Is that right? Yeah. Is that what you're doing? And uh, then you have, obviously, uh, sourcing, which is something not everybody can get into, but you've got to have a good network for it, and I understand. And then uh, you're also doing what? So you're doing uh, refurbs and obviously refinances. Are you keeping these assets or are you selling them then? Well, this one is not for my own portfolio, but for next year, we've got targets to do it for our own portfolio where we're going to be buying them for our, our own company. So Very that's nice. our big plan. And, you, and you're operating through a limited company. Correct, yeah. Very shrewd. Sophia seems to have all the answers, Lucky like Singh. What do you say? Does she remind you of yourself? Not that you were a female, but does she remind <laughs> you of your self in early days, Lucky like Singh, when you got into property? She seems to have done all the, the research and the homework. She knows what she's doing. What do you say, sir? Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think sounds very similar somewhat to what I, how I started off. Um, I think uh, she's got the extra advantage. She's very good at the numbers. Uh, I actually um, I worked with the business partner initially, so he was very good at the numbers, and I was very good at sourcing. So uh, 
maybe a tip for you, Sophia, is to probably focus in on your strength and maybe get a, maybe somebody else you can work with who's maybe stronger on other aspects where you may not be strong. But if you're strong on sourcing, because I think you've got you've got a uh, probably you're more multidimensional in your abilities by the looks of things. You've got two personalities. One is your thinker analytical side, and then you've got the other uh, um, you know the uh, personality that comes out that's very engaging so I think you're quite lucky I had to work harder on my maths I think that was my my issue I had to do a lot more uh, swatting to try and understand the numbers so but if you've got both I think uh, you're uh, you know quite a few steps ahead in terms of where ching, I was ring. when I started ching 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 lucky I like that okay we've got an interesting question from Marsha uh, and I think it actually resonates with one of the underlying themes of the question we've had this week which is trying to purchase properties or buy to let or get into the property industry, but having bad credit. Marcia says, had bad credit, and I think she somewhat became dismayed or despondent and said, decided to put that on hold or maybe didn't just stop searching for, uh, searching for you know, uh, deals or properties. And I, I think it can be very demoralizing for people because, uh, you know, credit file is like a, is, is one of the, uh, central focuses for the banks uh, when you're looking for finance. And if you don't have a good credit file, it, it can impact everything. Uh, so what advice do you have, Lucky, for Marsha? Is there any uh, um, is there any sense in her trying to uh, look for properties while she's got a bad credit file? Or uh, is there hope? Can you buy a property in... in, in uh, with a bad credit file, and more importantly, can you buy property whilst the the environment is a bit sort of uh, chaotic or a bit uh, fluid? She she needs advice, I think, and I think it'd be a good thing if you can give her something to think about, and then maybe we can arrange a follow up for her with the alternative business and property solution with Lucky Singh, the property fixer. Yes, Lucky Singh. Okay. Okay. I think it's quite simple um every every problem has a solution and there's a more than a few different ways of skinning a cat is the general theme here so it doesn't really matter really what your credit files like if you're setting up a business uh there'll be solutions to to get around some of these issues for example um sophia set up a company let's just I mean, I don't know how good her credit was. Let's assume if it was bad, uh, one of the things she could do is she could, uh, let's just say she's got a brother or a good friend, somebody that you can trust 100%. Uh, you could actually ask them to come and join you in the company as the larger shareholder. So when you are buying and if you've got a good credit file, you could poss that could be a possible solution mm -hmm. uh, to deal with that particular obstacle around credit. The second thing is that... Uh, Behind the scenes, you know, there are ways of literally getting back to uh, clean, like clean that, credit. Like that, Mr. Not very, necessarily, um, very crudely in between the lines there. Marsha, yeah. you need to pick the phone up, talk to Mr. Singh or one of the team at uh, the offices of Lucky Singh. There are ways, like Lucky Singh said, that you could uh, get uh, a property if you wanted to. It's not all doom and gloom. Right. Having said that, we've got Zeta asking the same question. I, have, I think we need to answer. She's a uh, she's not a UK resident. She's from abroad. And she's asking what's the criteria, what's the vetting process. How can she get into property? She knows there's money to make. She knows there is an opportunity. But she can't find the doorknob. What does she do? Are you okay. the doorknob? <laughs> So, so uh, Zita, there are uh, property or any business is actually is all about uh, ingenuity. So, if you're uh, very passionate about getting into business and property, let's say, then uh, you've just got to decide what you want to do, and then uh, all the right doors will start opening up once you set your intention. Um, so, the first intention should be really. You know, if you want to get into property, uh, if you're from abroad and how does it work is to speak to a mortgage broker and uh, 
<clears throat> I mean, if you've got a good income, um, oh, like again, I'm not understanding the question. Zincha yeah. is a boy anyway, he's a young man, so he's uh, don't mind it, Zincha. It sounds